Hello again, in part one of our tutorial series, we spoke about the elements that go together to make up a great picture. In this part four of the series, I want to talk to you about how you can use the controls on your own display to get that great picture quality that we spoke about. The first two controls that we want to speak about that help to make up the picture quality is first of all, you need to know about the black level and the white level. This test pattern that we have on the screen shows a series of steps that go through the displaced dynamic range from the blackest black that it can show to the whitest white. Now what that allows me to do is explain the effect of these controls right across the entire range of the picture and hopefully what you'll be able to see is how these controls interact with each other um, to affect the picture. The first control that we want to look at is a control that adjusts the black level, the darkest part of the picture. Now, rather confusingly, this control is called the brightness control. And what the brightness control affects is the darkest parts of the picture. If I decrease the brightness control, which is a common thing that people do, you will see that the darkest part of the image doesn't get any darker. You just lose some of this information here that should just be visible. So this is shadow detail or the really dark parts of the picture that you should still just be able to see. On the other hand, if I go in the other direction and increase brightness so that it's too high, what you can see is that my picture starts to become brighter in the dark areas than it should be. I reduce the dynamic range that's available in the image by making the darkest parts brighter. Now this control also affects the peak white level and if I just increase that a little bit more what you will see is that the controls start to run together in the bars here. You can see that we've, we've lost some detail and the colours have actually changed on our screen here. And if I just run that back down, you should see that that becomes easy to spot again. So that was the brightness control, which, as I said, confusingly controls the black level of the picture. The opposite of the brightness control is a control that would operate on the peak white, the whitest part of the pictures. And that control is the contrast control. Now, in the same way as the brightness takes the darkest part of the picture and makes it lighter or darker, the contrast is the same at the brightest part of the picture. It makes it brighter or darker. Now, again, using that same test pattern, I'll show you what happens if you increase the contrast control. What you can see is that the, the white parts, the brightest white parts of the picture start to blend together and you lose detail and information. On the other hand, if you set the contrast control too low, what happens is the picture starts to go dull and dim. You lose dynamic range and that makes the picture look flat and uninspiring. It's very important to get the contrast and the brightness control set as closely as possible so you can get the maximum dynamic range in the picture without losing any depth. The next part of getting a great looking picture is understanding how you set the colour accurately. The first control that we want to look at is how to set the saturation of the colour. So saturation being how vivid these colours are on the screen. And the control that allows us to do that is the colour control. Now again, what we have here is a simple and well-known test pattern called a Simpty Bars test pattern. What the Simpty Bars does is it shows us our primary colours, red, green and blue. We also have the secondary colours which are made by mixing two of the primaries, so yellow, cyan and magenta. This allows us to really easily see the saturation of the colours that we have on screen. Now, again, I'll pull up the colour control 
and as I increase the colour control, what happens is that the colours become very vivid. Now a lot of people like that vivid colour, but the problem that you have is it becomes very unnatural and cartoonish is a word that we use to often describe that. So quite an unpleasant effect when you watch it. On the other hand though, if you set the colour too low, which is another common fault that people make, you will find that the colours start to wash out and eventually they will go black and white, which you can see there, because there's no colour information now. Again, we need to find a balance between very vivid colours and a nice lifelike presentation. The next control that we want to look at is, again, a very misunderstood control. Um, one thing that all of us want to have in our picture is we want it to be nice and sharp and crisp and have as much detail as possible. Now what that means is that people typically go to the sharpness control in their display and crank it all the way up to maximum. But what the sharpness control actually does is it adds an artificial enhancement to the edge of fine lines like you see in this test pattern here. Now that artificial edge enhancement can be seen as a, a white halo, is what we call it, around these edges. And what that halo does is it obscures the fine detail that's hidden behind uh, in the moving picture. Now, this test pattern here is very plain and straightforward and allows us to show what the sharpness control does. But you can imagine this if you are watching football, for example, the fine detail of the grass would be obscured badly by the halos from having a sharpness control set too high. So what we'll do now is demonstrate the effect of the sharpness control. This is the effect of the sharpness control on this display at the default setting. There's a very, very fine edge enhancement going on. What I'll do now is increase the sharpness control to its maximum setting. What you can see now are very, very bright white lines around the edge of our black edges. Now those white lines obscure all of the detail that would be hidden underneath them. Now of course what we want to do is turn the sharpness control down. And you can see that the lines are disappearing and we're only left with the clean, the clean black lines. However, if we take the sharpness control too far, what happens is that our information starts to soften if you can see the edge of this number here, it has become a little bit blurred. I'll just increase the control again and hopefully that effect can be caught by our camera. And as I move down you will see that the edge of the number becomes a little too soft. So again, like all of the controls, there is a correct point. There's too much sharpness or too little sharpness. And of course we want to make sure that our display is set to the correct point. So now we've reached the end of tutorial number four. We've explained to you what those controls actually do and in part five of our tutorial series we'll show you how that you can set them to be exactly correct for your display.